Okay, sir. So if you could just give us an update of what's going on in, in Japan, that would be greatly appreciated. Mm -hmm. The situation in Japan has not yet bottomed out. In fact, it keeps deteriorating. Day after day, a new crisis opens up. So there's a best case scenario and a worst case scenario. The best case scenario is that perhaps they can stabilize the cores by putting water over them continually. In other words, we gotta get the pumps going. We gotta make sure that we have automated pumps that continually bathe the fuel rods in water and that, in principle, could, could end the accident. But that's not what's happening now. What's happening now is the accident is almost in free fall. At some point, if the workers have to evacuate, then the accident is in free fall. It means that no one is putting water on top of the cores. It means that in a full-scale evacuation, we'll have three simultaneous meltdowns, and the accident could be way beyond that of Chernobyl. So to understand step by step what happened, think of it this way. Let's say you're in a car, driving a car, and suddenly it surges out of control. That's like the earthquake. Well, you hit the brakes, right? But the brakes don't work because the tsunami went over the wall of the reactor. The wall was about 15 feet tall. The wave was 25 feet tall. The generators were in the basement, and the basement got flooded immediately, shorted out the generators, and lost all power as a consequence. So your car's out of control. You hit the brakes, nothing happens. You're out of control. Then the radiator starts to heat up and the radiator explodes. That's the hydrogen gas explosion. In those three reactors, we blew, literally blew the containment structure to bits with a hydrogen gas explosion created by zirconium metal coming in contact with hot water. So zirconium water reaction will generate hydrogen gas it exploded, blowing the tops off the reactors. So your car is out of control. You hit the brakes, nothing happens. The radiator blows up. Now you find out that the gas tank could explode. That's the core of the reactor itself. That is the worst case scenario. When the core containing 100 tons of uranium dioxide goes up in smoke. So your gas tank is about to explode. So what do you do? You run the car into a river. And that's what they did. They diverted seawater, corrosive seawater, salt water into the reactors to stabilize the situation. That's like running your car into the river. Well, it works sort of, but the river is very low. The river is not cooling your car totally. You still have to worry about, the, about your engine being uncovered. So what do you do? Well, you get hose water. You call out the fire department and you shoot hose water into the engine of your car. That's where we are now. If you take a look at any nuclear engineering textbook, the last chapter is always accident scenarios. This accident scenario is not in any standard nuclear engineering textbook. They are literally making it up as they go along. That you realize that we are in uncharted territory. This is a science experiment. We've never seen this before. We are guinea pigs to the nuclear industry because in all the textbooks, it says that when you hit the brakes, the car stops. That's the last chapter of any nuclear engineering textbook. The emergency core cooling system, the backup systems will always work. Well, that's what happened here at Fukushima. They all got knocked out simultaneously. All the backup systems got knocked out simultaneously. So it meant that the accident was basically in free fall. And now the radiation is spreading. 11 vegetables have been contaminated in the area. Milk, spinach, chrysanthemum greens, broccoli, and sea life is now being contaminated out to 20 or so miles from the site. Ocean water registers much more radiation than normal. So radiation is spreading even to Tokyo. Tokyo has several times the level that is considered normal as a consequence. At one point, infants were warned by the government, parents were warned not to have their infants drink the water. That's causing a run on water in Tokyo. If you go to Tokyo, the grocery shelves are almost all bare. People are hoarding food, they're hoarding water, and electricity is rationed. 
So you don't have electricity all hours of the day because that nuclear reactor site with six units on it produced a good chunk of Japan's total electricity. As a consequence, electricity has to be rationed. Subways don't work all the time. And now, of course, they are evacuating larger and larger areas. Right now, it's out to 12 miles, but the United States is advocating evacuating its personnel out to 50 miles. So what's happening? The Japanese people are voting with their feet. They are leaving the evacuation zone independent of what the utility is saying. They're saying they don't trust the utility. So we're seeing a second meltdown. The second meltdown is a meltdown of the credibility of the utility. Could you speak about the shortcomings uh, on behalf of the Tokyo Electric Company, the steps that they could have done to prevent this disaster? At every step of the way, TEPCO, the Tokyo utility, low-balled estimates, underestimated the damage, said everything is stable, and then things get worse. Well, when you say something is stable, it's like hanging by your fingernails on a cliff and saying, see, I'm stable, I'm stable. That's how precarious the situation is. They made several mistakes. First, design errors. They should have had a tsunami wall much greater than 15 feet. They should not have put the generators in the basement. That's just common sense. Second of all, when the engines, when the generators and the pumps got shorted out by the wave, they should have exercised the seawater option a lot earlier. We now know there's core damage. 70% core damage in Unit 1, 33% core damage in Unit 2. We don't even know how much core damage there is in Unit 3, but Unit 3 contains plutonium. It is the only unit containing plutonium, and we suspect there is a breach of containment in Unit 3, a crack. We think a large vertical crack in the vessel of Unit 3. That's dangerous because plutonium is one of the most toxic chemicals known to science. A speck of dust of plutonium in your lungs can cause cancer. And so first, the utility was slow in calling out the seawater. Why? Because once you put seawater in a reactor, your investment is turned to junk. It's corrosive seawater. And the utility wanted to preserve its investment. Then when seawater was finally put in, they left it in too long. Seawater, when it boils, leaves salt. How much salt? 90,000 pounds worth of salt, we think, in the units. That gums up the control rods, impedes cooling of the rods, and that in turn could cause a hydrogen gas explosion. So at every step of the way, the utility is late in terms of understanding the severity of the crisis.